Hello everyone and welcome back to my devlog series, where I'm making a survival game about a man who came into consciousness in the middle of a forest with no memory of the past and no other choice than to fix a broken train to find food, shelter and a sign of life. In the last episode we went over the inventory and the quest systems, showcased the new day and night cycle and today I'm back with new updates about the game. It's been by far the toughest two weeks since the start of the project and I don't know what kind of magic this is outside Hogwarts but as soon as I got a comment requesting to share some difficulties and problems I'm having during the development I just started having problems. See this is my first time making an inventory system in any of my games so knowing how difficult it is to make one I decided not to reinvent the wheel and just find a good tutorial on making an inventory system. And everything was working perfectly fine with my current items such as coal or wood until I tried to add guns. The thing is when the player uses a fuel item to feed the train I just remove the item from the inventory without changing any data about it. But the guns like many other items have specific data such as loaded bullets amount that have to be stored somewhere and be changed when the player uses the item. And with the implementation of the most tutorials on inventory systems this is basically not possible because of this one tiny detail. So right now if I add a water container item to my game and drink from one, all the other containers in the game will also get empty. So I guess it's time to reinvent the inventory. Luckily for me I found a random guy on Discord who did his best to explain to me how to handle data persistence between the different states of the items. And after 3 days of suffering we have a new inventory system that looks absolutely the same for you but is now a big pippy brain behind the scenes. And with this new system we are finally ready to move on to the main topic of today's video. As you know, from the previous devlogs, the player will be constantly leaving the train to explore different areas in search for supplies, and those areas will be filled with wildlife, like bears and coyotes, so the main usage of guns will be for self-defense. Now you might think that adding guns is easier, since making a first person shooter is basically the first devlog video of any game dev youtuber, and it's partially true if you are making a small game, but with the scope of my project that is meant to become a commercial game, everything is much more difficult to implement. In my game there will be other items besides guns which the player will pick up and use. So even though I'm only adding guns for now, the whole system should be designed to work with other items. There will mainly be two types of guns in the game. A flare gun which the player will find in the train right from the start and a shotgun which the player will find later when exploring the abandoned houses. So after 3 days of coding the new system, we can pick up the guns from the ground, hold them and shoot. I'm very happy with the system I came up with as it's pretty modular for my needs and if I decide to add more guns to the game it will be a matter of minutes. The Cinemachine package we started to use since the last video also came in handy as it allowed us to make very cool camera shake effects with its built in tools. I especially love how the flare gun visuals turned out during the night time. I haven't yet decided if I want to have actual hands for the player and partially that's why the guns have no reload animation right now. Speaking of hands and other 3D models in the game, I'll have to outsource that part to speed up the development process and to achieve better visuals than I'll be able to make myself. So if you would like to support the development of the project, consider Consider checking out my Patreon or just showing some activity under the video so it gets more views. I hate bringing this up, but working full time on this project means that the money from the videos is the only income source I can reinvest into the game to keep it going. I would love to have more visuals to show you in the video, but that's the reality of programming. You spend days solving problems people don't even know existed. That's it for today and see you in the next one.